Hello, Motor Rider World fans, and welcome to Paddock Talk, talking MotoGP Sepang Saturday. I said it was going to be exciting. I said it was going to be exciting, and that it was. I'm going to show you now the stupid face that I pulled when Jorge Martin put in that stupidly fast lap time in qualifying. This is it. I was like literally just sitting like that. I couldn't believe how fast that man is on that Ducati. Over one lap, I don't think there's anyone that can go faster in Jorge Martina, 157.7, the first official motorcycle to go under the 158 bracket, officially destroying the lap record, destroying everyone else. He was almost half a second faster than Neo Bacinini in second. So, yeah, incredibly fast lap time from Martin. We know that he, in this kind of form, he's going to be really good in the race as well. It's about going to be about management, depending on what conditions we get at Sepang on Sunday. Is it going to rain? Is it going to be boiling on sunshine? Is it going to be hot and humid? We don't know. But Jorge Martin's going to be there. There's no doubt about it. And you know what? Hats off to the young man for putting in that lap time. Incredibly fast was the Martinator. I hate calling him that, but the Martinator did it and he put it on pole position. And hey, Bacchanini, my tip for, for Sunday's race in second place there. I just think he's going to... He's just going to push like a bastard and I think he's going to just chip away and just be this consistent machine. Uh, I think with the likes of Peko, Fabio and Aleish, we've seen now that their, their minds are very much on the, are on the championship. Uh, the teams as well, the Ducati team looks extremely nervous. I think Peko having his girlfriend there was a bad idea because she's just putting all kinds of nerves in that pit. Every time the camera went on her, she just looked like a bag of nerves. Peko actually looks quite relaxed, you know, about the whole thing, but mistakes crept in the man crashed out twice today um you know it's 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 a lot of pressure I'm not saying they, they they're crumbling under the pressure but fabio had a crash he's fractured his his one finger on his left hand or something alicia spargo's had a couple of crashes you know he's down in 10th um Pecco's down in what is that ninth place fabio's in 12th so the title contenders feeling the pressure. While the likes of Martin got nothing to lose, goes as fast as I can, puts it in pole position. Bastianini got nothing to lose, although he's looking for a top three in the championship potentially there. Mark Marquez got nothing to lose and a brilliant ride from Mark Marquez. I think he can take a lot of confidence from this because they don't have the package. They don't have the bike. He didn't have the pace. But somehow Mark Marquez just dragged that Honda around for a fast lap. Got himself out of Q1 into Q2. He celebrated Q1 like he was on pole position. Got into Q2, was looking for the toe from Peko. Peko crashed out and marked it to do half the lap, more than half the lap by himself and managed to still put on the front row. He still said, you know, they don't have the package, they don't have the pace, they don't have the rhythm. But, you know, Mark, I think a rider like Mark would have taken a lot of confidence out there. It looked like the old Mark in many ways, just manhandling that Honda and literally, like I said, just just pulling it around the racetrack. So watch out, watch out uh, the rest of the field. I saw the statistic today that in the last four races or something, Mark has, has scored the most points um, out, of, out of all the riders or the last three races or something. So certainly the form is coming back. The confidence is coming back. The, the happiness is coming back. The, the feelings coming back for Mark Marquez. Um, let's see what he does on Sunday race day. Let's see what he does on Sunday race day because He's going to need a toe. He doesn't have the pace to just get up and clear off. He's going to be scrapping. Um, I think we're going to see a mark, you know, putting off moves to try and keep himself at the front. He's got to keep himself at the front. If he loses the toe of the front group, he'll 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 miss out on potentially top five, top three. So yeah, we're going to see a, 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 a hard farting, a hard farting, a hard fighting Mark Marquez on that Honda uh, running at the front end. It's going to be so entertaining. Bedzeki. The rookie of the year just is doing such a fantastic job is Marco Bezzecchi. Cannot sing his praises enough. He's up there in fourth. He was really good in FP4. He says he's got the pace. Didn't have the outright uh, one-off lap pace compared to the others, but says FP4 race pace. He's looking good, so watch out for him. Alex Rins on the Suzuki. All that confidence from Philip Island. He's right up there. He was also talking about his pace in FP4. He really thinks he can do something in the race. Luca Marini, same kind of sentiments. Don't really have the, the full um, blown one lap pace uh, as the rest. But FP4, really good. So watch out for him as well. Franco Morbidelli, best qualifying of the year. Great to see Frankie with a little bit of um, pace and performance in seventh place. But you, you just throw it all out the window with Frankie because he just makes these rookie ridiculous errors. And he did it again. Cruising on the race line on your outlap is just pathetic at this level now. And Franco Morbidelli has got to be the most penalized rider this year for that exact reason, and he goes and does it again. So Franco, 
I don't know. I don't know what to say anymore. It, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know how Yamaha treat this guy because that, that is, you know, I was talking about Paul Espargo in the, in the Friday review about, you know, when your confidence is so low, you just don't think of things. And, you know, Paul Espargo got his penalty for his silly error, just not thinking. And Franco's in the same boat. To go out on your sighting lap in Q2 in the dying stages to not think anyone is coming behind is, I don't know. Um, so Franco Morbidelli is, that, that's just so disappointing. Your best qualifying of the year, now you've got to serve two long lap penalties. So it's pretty much going to destroy your race because we know Franco is not going to start well. Certainly isn't going to start well, I don't think. And then, yeah, it's just a pity because Franco could have really taken something out of this. And now it's just all thrown by the wayside because of a schoolboy error. Um, can't believe Frankie Morbidelli at this level is doing that. But anyway, Maverick Vignal is in eighth place. Uh, interesting. Watched his debrief. Just watched his debrief. And had nothing positive to say about the Aprilia. Said we're not where we need to be. We need to work harder. I'm not happy. The bike's nowhere. We're... I was like, okay, it's tough. But, you know, he, he hasn't been the smiley Maverick from a couple of months ago. And he's really having a dig at Aprilia lately. So... Yes, Aprilia know that they, they've lost a bit of form. They've lost a bit of pace. Um, they know that. And for Maverick to be, you know, he's, his debriefs have been a little bit scathing of late of Aprilia. And, um, yeah, I wonder how Aprilia are going to kind of manage that whole situation. Um, I, I just find it a little bit, you know, yeah, sure, attack you if you don't have the feeling in that. But you do it a bit more gracefully. And the, the way Maverick's doing it is a, a little bit towards his, his end spell at Yamaha. And the way he started acting at Yamaha. So I'm hoping we're not going to lose um, Maverick, the Maverick Aprilia to the Maverick Yamaha side. Let's see. Pekka in, in in ninth, he certainly had a bit more pace, was on a good lap and then had that crash. Um, but he seems cool, calm and collected. But like I said in the Friday debrief, all the pressure was on him, on him now. Up till now, he's been chasing. He was 91 points behind. You're never going to win the championship. Just go out and focus on winning races. Now he's got to focus on maintaining this championship lead with, with, lead with two races to go. And like I said, I don't want to use the word buckling and, and crumbling under pressure, but the pressure is there and the team and him faltered a little bit um, with, the, with the crashes. So let's see uh, what he can do coming from ninth. I think he's going to be contender for top five, top three, but always coming from ninth. We saw what happened with Fabio and Aragon, especially in the tight turn one and turn two. That is Sepang. Anything can happen. Any, anything can happen. And that's that, that's Fabio Quattararo's biggest thing now. He's coming from 12th. So a lot of riders in front of you and a lot of riders coming from behind you, you know. Uh, whew, not the ideal position they want to be in. Uh, Alasia Spargrain, 10th, been a tough weekend for him, clawing onto that, that championship uh, contention. But you've got to kind of think he's he's out of it now. It's really between Pecco and Fabio. Uh, Jean Mir in 11th, uh, splitting there between Alasia and Fabio Quattrari in 12th. Fabio carrying that little bit of an injury. No confidence from the last couple of races. It's going to be a tough race for Fabio Quattrara. The Yamaha hasn't looked as good as I maybe thought it would have looked. Uh, yeah, it's a pang. Fabio's just looked flustered. He just he looks exhausted, does Fabio Quattrara. He's given his absolute all. And I, as, as I've said before, I don't need to go on about it. Yamaha have let him down. And um, Fabio can end the, the season off knowing that he, he did everything he possibly could to win the championship for Yamaha. Yamaha cannot say the same. Brad Binder in 13th, uh, I w this is what I was worried about. I know it was brilliant Friday, but I was kind of worried about, you know, would he have that one lap pace on the soft rear tyre compared to the others? In his debrief, he said, we just don't have it. He, he gave all he could in, in Q1. It just wasn't enough, just missing out on the top two spots, but in 13th place. And that's still an area they need to improve on, especially uh, in, in, in conditions like we saw at Sepang. So I, I was kind of worried about that and it, it, it kind of played out exactly how I thought. But his race pace is good. Um, what Brad has shown is that he can do the race lap times, what are going to be the leading race lap times, lap after lap. So if he can get a good start, the nice thing with Sepang is there's a couple of places to, to make passes. I think he'll make passes, get himself in that battle for the top five there. So uh, again, not ideally what we wanted, especially after a brilliant Friday from, from Brad Bunn and KTM, but I don't think it's too bad. 13th, good start, shove it on the inside of 12 riders, going into turn one or turn two and we're all smiling and Brad will be able to put in the laps from there. So I think a fight for the top five is, is on for Brad, maybe even the podium. Let's see. Jack Miller getting caught out by games. I don't think he played his strategy right in Q1. You know, I think he thought he was safe, obviously was put under pressure by the whole entire field going out behind him. I got flustered a little bit with that. Um, 
cool down the, the Michelin tire too much and try to get going and, and high sided himself big time. Hope he's not too injured. Doesn't look like he is. Looks like he will line up in 14th on the grid. But uh, yeah, I don't think he got his strategy right in that Q1. Uh, he was in the mix to go through with Pekka Banyaya and just didn't play his cards right there. So a little bit of a mistake there from Jack Miller and his team. Carl Crutchlow in 15th. Good shout out to Carl. Doing a great job as a retired test rider. Just uh, just really uh, getting in there. But again, his debrief's just saying that the MR is just not up to scratch. The bike's just nowhere where it needs to be. So let's see what happens with, with Sunday race day and what Yamaha are going to bring next year. I think it's a big year. Darren Binder, just the unluckiest weekend so far. Felt good in FP3, felt good in FP4, made some good improvements. Goes into qualifying, crashes early on, picks up his bike because he had to get his, his his number one bike back to the pits because number two bike was set up for the raid. Gets it back into the pits. They fix the bike up. He goes out again. As he starts his fast lap, two yellow flags. And that was his day done. So in 24th place, didn't even get to set a lap time there. Our Darren Binder starting from last. Uh, so let's hope for a little bit better luck on Sunday race day. And he can push through, get a good start, get himself in the mix, fight with some boy, get those elbows out. And just have a good race. Daz just needs another good race to back up the, the brilliant ride he had at Phillip Island. So, ladies and gentlemen, I said it was going to be an entertaining Saturday at Sepang. It was. I think it's going to be an ex well, I think it's going to be electrifying in Sepang on Sunday. I, I can feel the tension. I'm, I'm not there. I, I can feel the tension coming through the TV. I can feel the tension. Peko's putting on a brave face. Fabio's putting on a brave face. Alacious. They're all putting on this brave face, but I can feel the tension there. The teams look nervous. Uh, yeah, there's so much riding on this weekend heading into the final round at Valencia. So find yourself a comfy spot wherever you're watching it from. I hope you enjoy it. I think it's going to be absolutely sensational. I cannot wait. I'll be waking up early and watching it live. And um, yeah, we'll give you a little paddock talk from Sunday race day, a little review, and then talking MotoGP Monday night live on the Motorrider World page from 8 p.m. South African time. See you there.